everybody here at Justin Hamner in the day two. You're trying to take this thing wire to wire, aren't you? That's the plan. So far, so good. So we got one more day. See if we can't make this thing happen. So with that incredible win they're talking about tomorrow, you think it's going to hurt you or help you? I don't know. Every day has been so different. I don't think it's going to hurt me, though. I think any time you have wind on this lake, these fish bite. So am I picking up that you're feeling it? I'm feeling it. I've been feeling it all week. I don't even know what it is, but <laughs> I'm feeling it. So I'm telling you, so tomorrow, we watch you walk across the stage. You're going to have a little extra hardware, aren't you? Some little heavy, hold, hey, hopefully, to hold above your head. That's the plan, but we still got one more day to fish. Well, hey, you know what? I love it. Lock it in. Sick them. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Here with Matt Robertson, day two. So, you feeling good? Yeah, it's a pretty good day. Just not very many bites, but I knew going in, fishing how I'm fishing, I'm not going to get many bites, so... So, yeah. And, and with how it rolls tomorrow, with the, with the weather, what are you thinking? I like the wind. I like the wind. I like everything that's happening with it. I think it's going to make them bite the big baits, and that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Good deal. So you lay the hammer down on it? Oh, yeah. Put it in the rear view mirror? Yeah. Because I know we talked before on media day about wanting to kind of be in that stalking position. Yeah. Kind of having that shot. So yeah. it looks like you got yourself in position for that, right? Yeah, yeah. We're there. We're a little behind, but you can crack a 29-pound bag on this place and get it done. Good deal. Well, you know, we're well, wishing you best of luck and appreciate your time. I, know I you're appreciate way it. Out. Thank you. Thank you. Here on day two with none other than Mr. Hank Cherry himself. So, Mr. Cherry, how did it work out for you out there today? It worked out pretty good. I had 17, three, I think it was. I caught probably 20 plus keepers. Um, just a slow afternoon. I never really caught a big fish today. So, tomorrow, going out hunting all big ones, hopefully. Gotcha. As far as your personal angler identity is concerned, your own style, how do you think it sits up with the conditions and with the kind of tournament we got going out here? Uh, term, tomorrow's weather sets up really good for what I'm doing. I'm way back in the back places, tucked in, out of the wind. It can't get me no matter which direction it blows. So I'm just really looking forward to getting out there and uh, trying to make number three happen. Here with Jay Shakur. So coming into the tournament versus how it's ended up day two here, Tell me how it's played out for you, what you anticipated versus how it shook out. Yeah, I mean, I anticipated to not exactly catch as much as I've caught the last two days, honestly. My practice was pretty bad. Um, so I'm really happy with how the tournament's shaping out. You know, being in the top 10, going into day three, um, having a chance at catching a big bag, that's all you can ask for um, going into the final day. So much, much above anticipated. Yeah, I... The first day I did what I wanted to do, what I found in practice, um, today I really had to change it up. Um, a lot of things changed. I kind of had to change areas, um, change techniques, just because of that wind. That wind's a huge factor. On day one of the tournament, it was really calm, um, so you could run around and do whatever you wanted. Um, today was a lot different. Tomorrow it's going to be even more windier, so I'm probably going to have to change up again um, and probably not going to be able to catch some of the fish that I caught today doing what I was. I'm ready to lock a jig in my hand. and flip it around the entire day. Here with Tim Doobie, day two, Bassmaster Classic. So, where do you think you're going to end up? I'm outside the cut already. So once you're under that 25, it really doesn't matter where you end up. The Classic's all about winning. No one cares about second place or third place or fourth place. I mean, I would, uh, but I don't have that option. I'll end up in the 30s or 40s, but I had an absolute blast in my first classic. Sorry. Yeah, I, I mean, I fished the uh, the Bass Nation for probably eight or 10 years, somewhere in that range. Never had good success at the regional level until two years ago. I won the regional, went to nationals, thought this is my shot and did horrible at nationals. Jumped back in, did another regional, qualified through the state, got uh, to the national on Hartwell, and ended up finishing second to Will Davis Jr. who went back to back and I got one of the three classic spots as well as an elite spot that I found out later on. As far as fishing the south, what is your absolute favorite go-to method? Uh, well, south, a lot of the, the southern lakes have stained water in them. I love throwing a jig in either bushes or timber, um, which is against everything you're reading online right now, which is forward-facing sonar, ping in the minnow, throwing the jerk bait. But 
I, uh, I love throwing big rod, big line, really hitting them hard. I got to ask the question, you have live scope on the boat, right? You have to have live scope on your boat. Gotcha. But you don't have to have it to do good, right? Or, or what do you think? Yes and no. It puts using being a scoper, putting your bait in front of more fish than say going down the bank will then turn, make you catch more bass, which in turn will have a better average. Um, no, you don't need to do good or you don't have to scope to do well. Um, I believe most of the people in this term are not scoping. Fatality. Can you say that again? Just the way you said it. Just the same way. I believe most of the people in this term are not scoping. Ha! Got he! Ha! Got he! Ha! Uh, just the way Oklahoma Grand Lake fishes, uh, I'm sure some are, and but you don't need live scope to do well. Got you. So it does go against some of the conventional arguments. It absolutely that are does. being made. That's been beat like a dead horse, especially by one in particular YouTuber. Which <laughs> So it's nice to know that, yeah, it's kind yep. of the way I thought it was going to be. Same way as what you're and saying. It's a lot of fun. The bank beating, you know, old school, just going out. Absolutely. And you can tell just by the top baits, you're seeing jerk baits, spinner baits, jigs, all the unconventional live scope gear, uh, which is all traditional bass fishing stuff, is really shining this week. I really, really super appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And, who knows, maybe we'll see you back again one of these again soon. Absolutely. Thank you Thank so you. much. Here at Day 2 Bassmaster Classic, Tulsa, Oklahoma, none other than Brandon Polinick himself. So, how did Day 2 shake out for you? Day 2 was much better. Uh, I ended up doing the exact same thing I did day number one. Threw the same crankbait, throwing a Mega Bass Z2, and uh, fish the same places, making the same exact cast that I made yesterday. Yesterday I caught 13 and a half pounds, today I caught 17 pounds. And they were all just solid fish, three and a quarter to four pounds. And I mean, and I had it all to myself for the most part. So I'm looking forward to getting back out there tomorrow. We're gonna fish again on day three. We've got a lot of ground to make up to try to win this thing, but um, anything can happen. There's big fish here. We're gonna need 29 or 30 pounds probably to have a shot, uh, but that is possible here. The places I've caught a lot of them the last two days will actually be fairly protected, so that shouldn't make too big of a difference on how I'm fishing. I may do a few things different tomorrow. I'm gonna start out doing the same thing, uh, fishing some of the same areas try to catch a limit quick uh, and who knows I may catch a few good ones doing it and then I may change and uh, switch things up a little bit tomorrow to make things interesting. Fish are moving, they're moving up, down, all around so uh, things can happen, things can change, it's going to change for a lot of guys. You'll see guys move up and down the leaderboard tomorrow, shake things up. I just hope we're one of the guys moving up. Here at Lee Livesey, day two, Bassmaster Classic out of the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. How did your plan start out? How has it changed? How has it held together? Uh, it, it's just the same old Grand Lake. It never goes like you think. You got to catch them somewhere different, some way different every single day. That's what I did today. I caught I caught every single fish cranking today. Yesterday I caught them on a jig, chatterbait, spinnerbait, crankbait, a little bit of everything. It's different every day, and tomorrow's going to be even more different. We got a huge weather system coming, 20 to 40 mile an hour winds, so things are going to change. In anticipation of what you might have to change up, do you think you're going to have to do anything outside your normal wheelhouse? Uh, I don't think you have to do anything and just that you're not comfortable doing, but I think you need to do something uh, different, whether it's location, bait, fast, slow, whatever it is, I'm definitely going to change up a little bit of all that, uh, different location, different baits slow down a little bit, I've been going real fast, or speed up where I've been going slow, and, and just see if that triggers a couple bigger bites. So right now you're kind of in a stalking position in the pack. Yeah, I, I definitely think the, the wind is going to hurt a couple guys, but I think it's going to help the moving bite, whether it's cranking, big swim bait, spinner bait, something like, something's going to open up. There's going to be a bite window with a different bait or a different technique that's definitely going to open up. Here with Justin Barnes, day two Bassmaster Classic. Man, I had 13 pounds, 13, 13. Um, caught all of my fish the last 25 minutes in the day, so it was very stressful. Uh, I'm on the bubble. Don't know if I'm going to get to go tomorrow. It's, I'm either going to be the first man out or the last one in, so 
if I make the cut, I'm going fishing. I really don't have a plan. Um, I'm gonna put my head down and try to catch five big ones and see where we end up. What's been your overall strategy? What have you been targeting? Um, brush piles and uh, shallow rock. I've been throwing a crankbait, a jig, and a spinnerbait for the most part. Uh, the bigger bites coming on spinnerbait. If you had one spinnerbait to throw, just if, let's say you just go out with just one year round, the whole 365 days, you're relegated to one. What would it be? A six cents divine, double willow. What color? Uh, anything shad. Here at Brandon Cobb, end of day two. Looks like you got yourself into a final day here. It's gonna be really, really close. We, uh, I knew if I had 14 even, I was basically 100% in, but I had 13, 12. So we're gonna be right there at the cut line. It's gonna be really, really close. There's a bunch of three-way ties right around low 29s. Oh, so uh, gonna be a squeaker. It's gonna be a squeaker. It's gonna be a squeaker. It's the, unfortunately it's basically a, a long shot to even get a top 10 because of the weights. But if we uh, get some wind tomorrow, this lake's got 25 pounds in it, so I don't want to leave a day on the table. Yeah, so I think the wind will actually help what I've been doing. I've caught most of my fish actually on a spinnerbait, which everybody knows a spinnerbait's better in the wind. But the other side of that is a lot of my fish have been kind of heavy cover behind docks, behind things like that, which is not easy to do in the heavy wind. So it'll be challenging to fish, but I think they'll bite better if you can get the bait to them. Can we straight swing for the fences? Yeah, basically. I mean, other the, the only money difference is in the top 10. So if you don't catch 20 pounds or 20 plus pounds, there's really no point going, to be honest. So you might as well so, take so, the big so swings, right? I, I know a lot of fish are getting caught probably ways I'm not, not my forte, but I think I could catch a big bag on a spinnerbait shallow or in a jig if I ran into the right one. So I think that's what I'm going to go do if, uh, if we make it in there. So it... Well, first, this week I'm actually throwing a unique spinnerbait because of the lake. It's just, it's not unique for this area, but it's not something I throw at home a lot. I'm throwing a three quarter ounce single Colorado greenfish tackle spinnerbait. And mostly because I can fish it very slowly. You have very short presentations. I'm throwing behind docks, behind walkways, things like that. You only have six or eight feet for the fish to get it. So you don't want moving fast. I love those big thumpers. Th that's right, the big thumper's fun. It doesn't work as well around my area back in South Carolina. It's really good on these steeper type lakes like this.